I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about science and data. For those of you out there who really want to believe that those things are objective measures of reality. Uh, you may believe that because someone you trust told you and it sounded nice and reassuring that there's objective reality out there and we can easily measure it. I'm sorry to tell you that in the words of the great Ben Goldacre, I think you'll find it's a bit more complicated than that. Uh, I'm thinking of all of this because I recently saw a news article proclaiming that people in Philadelphia, uh, my hometown, are drinking less soda after instituting a tax on sugary beverages. This is ostensibly a success since the tax was put into place to do precisely that, since sugary beverages are making us fat and being fat is unhealthy. Several of the things I've just said are wrong, uh, and several of the things are right, but they're pointless and out of context. So let's go over it. Uh, first of all, it's not actually a tax on sugary beverages, nor is it a soda tax, as it's known colloquially. Uh, it's a tax on any beverage that's not unflavored water or something containing at least 50% of milk, fruit juice, or vegetable juice. Which, on its face, is stupid, because milk, fruit juice, and vegetable juice can make us fat, while my precious Coke Zero, which is subjected to the tax, cannot, on its own, make you fat. There are, are practically no calories in it. It's impossible. Uh, you could probably have a heart attack from it if you drink enough, but it's not going to make you fat. I promise. Meanwhile, alcoholic beverages are taxed in their own category, and let me tell you, they are definitely making us fat and unhealthy. Um, of course, stopping people from getting fat isn't the only reason that the tax was implemented. Philly representatives claimed that the increased tax would go to education for very young children, which is hard to do if you're also claiming that that tax will make sales go down. If you raise the tax by 20%, but then 40% of people stop buying the product, have you made any money? Go ahead and show your work. Go ahead, puzzle it out. Uh, take 100 people, they pay a dollar for in tax for something, that's $100. You raise the tax by 20%, you lose 40% of your buyers. Now 60 people pay $1.20 for tax, you're getting $72. Something isn't working here, or what could it be? Uh, let's talk about the actual study, though. Their data does show that 40% of people are less likely to drink a soda and 60% less likely to drink an energy drink. Why are those numbers so kind of generic and shady? That's because this was a survey, not a look at actual numbers. So already we have to realize that the data isn't just data. It's been collected in a particular way, in, and that means it might not mean what we think it means. Uh, Maybe people just say they won't buy the soda, but then they will. Uh, it's tough to say, just from a survey. That said, to be fair, some actual numbers do suggest that soda sales have indeed gone down in Philadelphia, including one study that says it may be a nearly 60% drop in sales. But we don't know if they've gone up in the areas that are just outside of Philadelphia. Sure, poor people may, might not be able to drive to the edge of town to pick up their soda, but others might. Back to the study, uh, about 60% of respondents said that they would now be more likely to buy bottled water. Is that the change we want? I mean, yes, water is what everyone should be drinking all of the time, but not out of wasteful plastic bottles. The tap water in Philly is clean. There's no reason for people to buy bottled water. So this is actually a negative side effect of this tax. Here's another possible negative side effect that isn't mentioned in the study, but has shown up in other studies. Alcohol sales in Philadelphia have increased since the soda tax went into effect. This has been found in other places like the UK, where a recent study shows that a drop in sugary drink sales correlates to an increase in lager sales. So all of this is just an illustration to say that data isn't just data existing in a vacuum. Data has to be collected in a certain way. Decisions are made by humans on how to collect it and then how to statistically analyze it. And then data is used by humans to institute policy change. And even when that policy change may seem like it's working in a certain way, sometimes you need to look at more data. You need to look at the bigger picture to understand whether it's actually accomplishing the thing that you want it to do. But seriously, stop taxing Coke Zero. It makes no sense. Uh, it's the only thing that keeps me going some days, and you do not want me to swap it out for whiskey. I'm telling you, productivity would go way down here.